Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Masters and Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk to you today about entering in. Um, it's going to kind of be a multifaceted thing, but I'm going to kind of dive right into the scriptures and the main theme of it. But there's just so much to share. Uh, so please tune into my other videos. They're, they're not all over the map. There's just a lot um, to share. So you just have to, you know, pick and choose some, but. Please, please, look at some of my other ones and share them with others. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Kind of, it's in Matthew seven thirteen. Kind of what? What are you talking about? What the Lord highlighted to me. The gate, the doorway, is Jesus. The cross. The cross. We have to enter in through the cross, through the blood of the Lamb. That was God's ultimate plan. The whole thing of death, burial, and resurrection was so that man could enter in to become his sons and his daughters. The reason why it says broad is the way is because all you have to do is look around. When I popped up YouTube, there's all these different videos to watch. All kinds of stuff. Most of it, a lot of it's political right now, but, you know, Trump said this, didn't say that, did say this, he's a liar. Don Lemon did this, didn't do this. Hillary with her face twisted up because she's going to go to jail. Just all kinds of just stuff. And it's like, man, guys. And all this just different kinds of stuff. That some, some, no, some's true. But about all different kinds of false religious beliefs and mistruths and misguided stuff that's going on all around. And it's like, man, guys. You know, it's time to get focused on the truth. That's one of my messages. Who's your source? Ask God. Ask Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask to find it in the Word of God. I don't want to be an opinionated preacher. I'm not going to be. I don't want my opinion out there. I don't really care. It took me 38 years to get here, guys. It's been a long, long journey. I do have a little bit of sense. Just love directing you to Him. So, why would it say difficult? That it's difficult to get in, to find it. Because the enemy of your soul is trying to throw up every kind of single roadblock you can think of through deception mostly, really. All this twisted up stuff swirl all around you. Just trying to enter in. He's trying that's the other part of this. He's trying to enter in into your mind. So you can twist it up into something that's not. Arguing with your parents, arguing with your spouse, arguing with your children. Look at the political realm, everybody standing on their podium and arguing with everybody. It's vicious hateful circle. This is the last election we lived through. Whether you voted for Hillary or whether you voted for Trump, it was like, man, I still think about some of the things that people said about different candidates. You know, they trashed each other. Bad. It wasn't even about who had a better plan. It was about who was the worst guy or gal. You know, it was like, man, guys. Jesus is like told me to told me a couple years ago he said the messages he was going to give me were going to be to plow down the sin because there's all this judgment swirl in a lot of the religious realm and then there's all this everything's love God, 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 God is love it's nothing but love and just can do whatever you want in a lot of context, it's like, man, 
Where are you getting your information from? Who's your source? You know? I got almost 20 years in the holiness, Pentecostal swirl and realm, so I get it. I'm working on it. I don't want to be the judgment guy. I don't want to pull that out of, pull that rabbit out of the, out of my hat. It's out there though, but at the same time, the other side is like, man, you know, just everything's just so love, 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 which it is. Jesus so loved the world that he gave his only son, his only begotten son. That's how much he loved us. But it kind of reminds me of like the hippie days, you know? It's like, man, guys, you know? It's just loose, loose stuff out there. You can't just take the itchy, feel good, warm, fuzzy feeling messages. And you also can't take the, the harshness and the, you know, of browbeating people. You know? I mean, that's why it's difficult, because there's all this stuff that's trying to buy for your attention and distraction and time and, and money and stuff, you know, and it's like, one of my most favorite scriptures is, Ephesians 2, 3, and 4. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Don't don't let this world enter in because it's trying to take up your space and your time and your brain power because that's what the devil's after so you can get into your heart. And then it becomes a heart issue. You know, we all think David was such a great awesome guy and he, you know because he's a man after God's own heart it's a mess murderer adulterer liar cheater stepping to be a king with a lot of money with billions unfortunately the American culture especially connotates that is a blessing that you got money that God stamps all over you his hands all over you his hands all over us because we're a rich country Supposedly, not. Not true. And I'm not going down the other side. And I'm not, the other, you know, my wife and I, the Lord had us go 2,000 miles away to Pennsylvania to minister to a couple different people. It ended up being about 15, 20 people, but there was just a couple people that were highlighted specific, and I only had part of it. Cost, you know, it cost us two fifty a day, and we were gone 14 days. Do the math. I had to have a decent car to get there. Air conditioner had to work. The heater had to work when it's cold. And the gas. I get it. I understand it. I'm not going down that narrow-minded path. You know, there's not a big... But then there's... And it's not even a disparity, but it's like, look at the widow's mind. She's getting more than everybody around her, you know. It's a hard issue. we got to get our focus off of stuff and things attitudes that's the difficult part of it that's the narrow part of it that's the we want to formulate and get our own opinions we want to be right we want to be you know somebody says something at church we don't like it's like we want to form our own opinion and our own little group and our own little stuff to you know we'll ask 10 people till we get everybody to agree with us Take it to God. Something's getting highlighted, you know, about somebody or something. Maybe it's a chance. Maybe it's an opportunity to pray. Now, not maybe. It is an opportunity to pray. Maybe God wants you to bring it to Him. What's He trying to show you? Maybe it's some of the stuff in you. There's a saying that my wife, when she was an AA, and even though it's an AA saying, it's a worldly saying, it still makes some sense. It's like, you spot it, you got it. Maybe God's trying to highlight something in your life. You know? You know, it's time to clean up your side of the fence. I don't know. Take it to him first before you start just spitting stuff out. Because then that becomes a distraction. Because then you can be a distraction of the person next to you. You can be a distraction of your spouse, your kids, the pastor. It can just become a, 
a whirlwind of stuff that's not necessary. Focus with our heart. Heart tuned to trusting in Him. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your paths. Why do you think this is the Holy Ghost? If we're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to lead, guide, and direct us to all truths. Stop us from our minuscule mindset, opinionated world, this and that stuff. A lot of it's unnecessary, it's just weights and stuff. I'm not telling you to just, you know, totally ignore the things that you got to take care of. You know, you got to take care of your job, you got to take care of your light bills, you got to take care of cars, things, you know, that require some effort. That's not what I'm saying. But some of the stuff just needs to be laid down and set aside. And that's where the broadness comes in. Look at the world. Everything's include everybody. Everybody. Heaven's this great big green meadow, pearly gate, and everybody's just going to kind of be, be waiting there for all of us, and we're just going to fall in. Okay? Well, let's. Taking God's Bible out of context, a lot of His Word out of context, really, honestly. Sorry. I've been on this journey. Look at the one about 3.16. About Colossians 3.16 being just as, as important, that's what the Lord told me, as John 3.16. Just read them, okay? Or look at that message. It's about how we entreat each other in the church. And we entreat the body. But, you know, as I was doing it, and then the Lord kept dealing with me, but anyhow, I look up 3.16, look up Matthew 3.16, that's an awesome scripture about Jesus being baptized. God took, God sent him on a journey, knew he was going to do that. At infinite time, could have been doing anything else, some other stuff. We take that out of the church a lot. Trash it, stomp on it. Make you know, pull it out and act like it, you know, I mean, or we go and that's it, that's the whole enchilada. What's he showing us? Who's your source? Where are you getting your information from? You know, I mean, you could go, then as I was reading all these 316s, it was like, Genesis, look at the prophets, Daniel 3.16, awesome scripture, Malachi 3.16, awesome scripture, but then Revelation 3.16 is about if you're lukewarm, he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. Look at Ezekiel, what are you going to do with Ezekiel 3? A righteous man falls and perishes and dies, and you don't warn him, blood's on your hands. But if you warn him and he turns, back to God and set him free. Well, how can a righteous man fall and perish? Well, how can there be five foolish and five wise virgins? How can there be in Matthew, it's another one in Matthew, I forget the, the, the scripture, but it says, you know, many are going to come to me in, in, in the last days and try to enter in and say, you know, we prophesied your name, we did all this wonderful stuff, cast out devils, did all this stuff, and he's like, I never knew you. How could that be? That's what I'm trying to say. That there's just this, this when you just broad broadcast everything and everything everything so goes. All this stuff enters in to your mind and you start believing it. And then it gets in your heart. That's what the devil's after, trying to enter into your brain, to enter into your heart. Throw up all these roadblocks. I'm just stuck could be an offense against your wife or your, or, your, or your husband or your children or your pastor or it could just be, you know, I mean, there's whole cottage, not cottage, but there's whole industries that are, you know, peeling off onions of stuff that people have been hurt for for 40, 50 years, 60 years, or however long, long time. Childhood trauma. Yeah, I, I, got, I get it. Some of it's probably very, very hurtful. People live through a lot of crap. 
You know, we minister at, the, at, the, at a homeless shelter, and it's like, man, it's like, it's like, it's like stepping off into a war zone into Vietnam or something. There's just all this stuff going on. You know? So, but... Jesus is the answer to this, guys. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You know? He's given us direct access because we didn't have it in the Old Testament. Name some people that had this direct contact with God, but now it's like, man, you got a direct connection with Him, but it's got to be through Jesus. He has to be in your heart. He has to be King. To be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's what's going to give you power. To stand, to endure the wiles of the enemy and the tricks and the traits and the, you know, he's after your mind, guys. All this stuff is trying. That's 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 the other piece of this. It's trying to enter in to taint, to disillusion you, to disproportion you. Their minister, ministers, min people. You can stamp the name church on anything, guys. It's not where you go. Because some churches have four or five hour services, some gloat over forty five minute service. You know, you like you did God a big favor. You showed up and one or two songs or whatever, a little bit of ministry and shook everybody's hand and left. Or you stay and you just have this blowout worship service and this blowout ministry time and then you kinda leave maybe even the same. It's it's about where you where your heart is? How's your life the rest of the time? What are you doing with it? What are you, you know, your secret place? How are you treating your wife, your children, your co-workers, the people in the church next to you? What do you, you know? It's like, we got to get a little bit more focused on Jesus. Because that's the real reason. That was God's ultimate plan. You know, and it's like God thought it not Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Man we'll blow away with that scripture, run to the mountaintop. Doors are no doors are closed, they're all open, we just bust through everything. It's just an awesome verse. Read the rest of it. But he took on the form of a servant even to the obedience of death. What if God's telling you to die out? That's what I'm saying when he highlights some of this stuff. Maybe it's part, partly something that you guys are doing. You know? Maybe not. You know? There's, just, I'm going to end with this. There's, a, there's, like I said, there's this stuff that goes on in there. You go to a lot of different, you hear it in a lot of different churches, and you know, apostles, so and so, and prophets, so and so, and God showed me this, God showed me that. And if you don't agree with some of these, some, some of these people, they're like, you know, bring a volcano and an earthquake and fire from heaven and destroy you. And they gloat over it. It's like, man, why would you gloat over somebody's destruction? Where's the love of the Father in that? Where's God in that? Where's Jesus in that? I get it. I understand. When one stand against the sin that's in this world and speak the truth, and there's many, many, many false religious religions, churches, swirl out there, worlds full of the world. Many, many, many distractions brought brought us huge, easy path. That's where the difficult part comes in. And then we want to focus in on the prize, the mark of the high calling. What that means laying down my line, which it probably does. Respects. But it's time to 
focus on him, guys. What's God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Word telling you to do, showing you to do, teaching you to do, having you be? All this other stuff, don't even let it enter in. Don't even let the broad, broadness of just opinionated, you know, you know the saying, opinions are like, you know what, everybody has one. <clears throat> to, they'll take certain verses and you know, just some church will be just all about one or two verses or the you know the just one one direction or one just it's like man guys but then you know we have to we should get that's what Colossians 3 is about. We should get joy in our hearts when we see God using Jesus in, the Holy Ghost moving in others. It should bring us great joy. Today we want to try to quench the Holy Spirit, pull it down, glamour, be above, be better than. My ministry, this, that twisted up stuff you never even be seen you might be in the jailhouse or the hospital or on the streets or wherever you know Just, my wife and I have a broken hearted ministry with the homeless but that doesn't it didn't connotate anything greater than what if you're college educated and in the executive world and those people need salvation too I'm not able to connect with them, probably. It's not my world. It might be yours. We all have purposes, guys. We all have a reason. So what's he telling you to do? You know? Not be influenced and distracted by all this stuff that the enemy's throwing up. All these, all these fires. You know, look what natural things, sure, of course, but look what SWAT does when they go to get get somebody that raised in all kinds of hell. They go to bust in. They usually use something like a distraction, like a flashbang grenade so that the perpetrator looks over here and does, reacts to this so they can get him. What the enemy's doing, you know, all this stuff, distraction and swirls and things and false religions and hypocritical people in the church and out of the church and the world and politics and that's the broadness get our minds off of the gate which is the cross get our minds off of Jesus and the real purpose and the real reason dig to this message go ask God you know what's he, what's he what's his preacher saying what's he talking about show me that's what I do I'm kind of like Larry the Cable Guy just get her done Come, you know I'm just I'm just a simple person but you know you may be a little bit more complicated or complex or more educated or whatever you know that's fine too nothing wrong with that either wherever your walk with is in life is because you've got a purpose a plan and God's got a destiny for you if you choose it if you walk in it, if you had that, if you had that way, so anyhow, sorry to be so long-winded. Um, no, I'm not, but directional. Who's your source? Where are you going? Enter in. He's calling us, you know. I'll say this last thing, you know, kind of because it's kind of all inclusive. I mean, there's stuff going on all around, guys in the judgment realm. I mean, if you live in some of those, I'll pray for them. I'm not, the people that, some of them lost their lives in those fires in California, you know? Some serious stuff, guys. Very hurtful stuff. So they kind of feel like there's a little bit of judgment going on. 
What about the Hurricane Harvey? The people that lost their houses and lost all their possessions, and some of them lost their lives and their loved ones. Or even Katrina, which is old, you know? Or, you know, 9 11. Or just, you know, it's like, man, guys. But he's telling us to focus on him. And not look at all this stuff that's going on all around us. Thousand falling away and ten thousand are left. We keep our mind focused on him. Things have a way of working out. I I love people in the world, but not everybody's gonna make it, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't make this plan. I didn't create it. I'm just, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the mailman. But you can make it. It's your choice. Your family can make it. It's your choice. You can be the, the head out and lead and take care of everything to get in there. Ask God, who's your source? I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be CNN or Fox News or Donald Trump or Hillary or Obama or anybody else or any of the other stuff or any other. You know, I could name some preachers too, and it's like, man, guys, you know, a lot of new agey hipster. Self, self, self. What's in it for me? There is something in it for you, life eternal, but you gotta, gotta, gotta get it. Seek it for yourself. And then you can bring others with you. Then we can be an influence into this world. Then we can stand up. Then America can be great again. I'm gonna say this one last thing and then end with it, you know? We think, because this is part of the world concept and it's centered in the church. We we think we put a God we trust on a dollar bill and we're such a blessed nation because of it and the money and we're such a rich nation and sorry guys, we're kinda of hoodwinking we're kinda of hoodwinking God on that one. Country country's broke, we could get out of it by taxing more, probably. I mean but can't pay our bills. We're talking about it now about partial shutdown of the government. We just don't, you know, they, they just borrow more money. They get deeper into debt. They don't ever talk about paying it back or anything. You know, it's kind of like a big sort of like a big Ponzi scheme, really. Not not very righteous and holy and acceptable. And you know, you know. Go tell them you want to put in Jesus we trust in the dollar. They'll see how far they get you. They don't need a local courthouse. And pass out tracts and talk about Jesus. And see how long this, before the county sheriff comes up to you and tells you you got to leave. You offended somebody. Go to a church and say that. You know, stand up and say, well, heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out devils. And the sheriff will come and get you out of that church, too. A lot of them. Taking them out of the equation. God. As long as you do, you know, you do whatever you want to do, except go stand out in the mall. Go even talk on the internet. I put put just Jesus on it. See how many people really gonna catch it. I'm trying to be popular. I'm not trying to be offensive either, but I'm like, I don't I don't care anymore. The place where it's like man. Know that I know that I know, you know. Some of the stuff I'm sa I'm saying, you know, you don't like those pages in your Bible, tear them out. I have a holy Bible, all right. I'll be so full of holes you won't recognize it. So anyhow, we love you guys. I got to tell the truth. It's time for you to tell the truth too and stand up. It is about love. It is about so God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It is about your values. It is. About Enemies after your identity, still who you are, your son of God, if you want to be. That's where the choice comes in, that's where the scripture is about. You're going to walk down the 
broad path and do whatever, whatever's popular, inclusive, or you know, non-offensive, or whatever, you know? Or are you going to hand me that gate? Take up your cross. Follow me. What's God telling you to do? What's Jesus telling you to do? What's the Holy Ghost telling you to do? Might not be popular. Might not get a lot of likes on your Facebook page or, or I mean, on your YouTube channel or whatever, you know. It's okay. I'm just going to be me. I'm the vessel that God created me to be. Like I said, it's 38 years. I, I get the grace piece. I was a prodigal son for years after ministering at several different churches. <clears throat> Off and on. Not like the lead minister or anything, but I did speak a lot. A couple of them. I get it. Prodigal son experience. I get it. Man of God. I get it. I understand. I get the grace piece because I live through it. So I'm not the finger pointing God. Because my robe. Anderson Cooper or whatever. I'm not that popular, but if they did an investigation on my life or whatever. Dirty, messy stuff. People would come out of the woodwork saying what a bad guy I was. Not probably. I was. But by the grace of God, by finally finding that narrow gate, by finally coming to the cross, and the realization of who I was, got a breakthrough. That's all I'm telling you. It's there for you. It's right there. But anyhow, you know, it's a long message. You know, I hope you listen to the whole thing. We really love you guys. Listen to our other ones, kind of share them. There's just a lot to share, guys. I just well, I can't seem to stop. I want to just continue on and on. And just who's your source? Enter into that gate. Quit letting all this other stuff influence who you are and mark who you are and stamp who you are. You're a child of a king. A son of God, a son and a daughter. If you choose to be. That's the, that's that's the crux of this whole thing. Broad, do whatever, wander around, whatever, chase this, this and that, or focus on him. The cross. And Jesus and Jesus and God's plan. And follow his plan. Because he had a plan. He was very orderly God. And there's a reason and a purpose. But instead everybody wants to talk about everything. A lot of other stuff. Distraction. Letting stuff in and in. Opinions. All kinds of egos going throughout the world. In the church. It's like man. I'll leave you with this. With all this egotistical religious garbage that's such distraction most of it is unfortunately read Matthew 20 read your Bible it's in there guys just read Matthew 20 and I'll leave it at that and see what I'm talking about. You'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, anyhow, we love you guys. Uh, tune in to some of my other messages. Uh, thanks for listening. This is kind of a long one. I, you know, hopefully people got to the end of this. But if you want to email me personally, it's stevejoungstrom at yahoo.com. You can email me at youngstrom at gmail.com. Uh, put a comment on my YouTube channel. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for listening. Uh, let's see. Let's see.